Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reed, and I'm a naturopathic doctor, and this is a video about treatments that can be the most useful for helping to optimize cognitive health and well-being. Uh, this is part two of an answer to a question of this post that was posted on a previous video of mine about, um, or no, actually, it wasn't a question on a video, it was an email that was sent to me uh, by someone who likes watching my videos, and I'm glad they like watching them so much, um, about uh, things that can be done to assess for and treat um, underlying uh, cognitive health issues or, or certain mental health um, related issues. But it was kind of the, the punchline that I took from the question, at least, was uh, what kind of things can be done to assess or address um, uh, or help to promote optimal brain health if there's some underlying issues going on. So in the first uh, part of my answer, I talked about a number of tests that could be considered, and then uh, I was going on and on as, as I like to do in videos, and so I, I ran out of time. So now I'm going to stop going on and on about the preamble here and um, uh, just talk about some different uh, treatment options to consider. And, and as per usual, nothing that I say should be construed as medical advice, so please speak with your personal health care authority, uh, or health authority rather, um, uh, but before making any treatment decisions for yourself, or at least I'd recommend that you do that. You can do whatever you want, but please don't take any advice from me um, unless you're my patient. So <clears throat> um, the, the optimal uh, therapies that are helpful in my experience for optimizing cognitive health, brain health, what have you, um, I think I mentioned at the end of the, the last video that um, treatments that are the most effective uh, would certainly include addressing whatever the root cause factors are that might be driving the underlying issue in the first place. So if a patient has mold illness, then treating that mold would be really important. If a person has uh, persistent borreliosis, also known as chronic Lyme disease or chronic viral infection, treating those microbes are going to be a very important part of that protocol. Um, but what I had mentioned in the last video is that in this video, I talk about specific therapies that just in and of themselves seem to be helpful for overall neurological health and function. So some of the things that I found to be the most useful include uh, using different antioxidants. Um, antioxidants are super, super important for all the tissues in our bodies. Um, they're uh, particularly important for the health and integrity of our mitochondria, uh, which are really the uh, under the backbone of, of overall good health is healthy mitochondrial function. Um, and then of course, my, um, uh, antioxidants also uh, neutralize or quench uh, free radicals, um, i.e. pro-oxidants, i.e. the opposite of antioxidants that can cause a lot of tissue damage. So it turns out that our brains are made up of pretty important tissue. Um, these neurons are super vital. Our brain kind of runs the whole show um, in our bodies and um, they really don't like a whole lot of oxidative stress. They, they like a, a nice, um, uh, they want to be, they, they want to make sure that they have enough antioxidants kicking around to quench uh, or get rid of any of those free radicals that might be floating around because it's fairly delicate tissue. And so um, what I have found is that things like glutathione, especially when it's a liposomal glutathione, intravenous glutathione works too, but it's just so much more expensive and inaccessible than liposomal glutathione, which uh, seems to work very, very well in my experience. Not every liposomal glutathione is created equal, at least based on my clinical experience. I've used some products that have been just not that helpful and some that have been very, very helpful. Um, also, uh, vitamin E is very important. So my, to my understanding, glutathione is the most potent, most important. They're all important, but if you had to pick your favorite, maybe glutathione would be the most important water-soluble antioxidant, whereas vitamin E, to my understanding, is the most important fat-soluble antioxidant. And with vitamin E, uh, vitamin E is actually a family of molecules um, called tocopherols and tocotrienols. And without getting uh, too geeky about it all, um, in my opinion, <clears throat> it's important to work with a combination of mixed tocopherols and mixed tocotrienols. You want all eight of those uh, different uh, uh, vitamin E molecules together. That seems to work the best. Um, I've also had some patients who have done really well working with um, something called methylene blue. Methylene blue is this uh, originally, I think this originally uses as a, as a chemistry dye once upon a time, but over the course of time, some wacky researchers decided to start testing it in critters and then eventually in humans, and it turns out it's a really, really strong antioxidant. I could do a whole video about methylene blue, um, and I probably will at some point, but it's something that can be really helpful, whether it's taken orally or intravenously, uh, so that, that can also be quite helpful for cognitive health and function. Uh, some patients certainly do notice some benefit from uh, different other, other uh, herbal antioxidants or herbs that are rich in antioxidants like say ginkgo biloba. Haven't really seen a ton of um, help from those historically in practice, but it is sometimes helpful. 
um, and then also making sure that the brain has uh, certain substrates or uh, base molecules that are necessary for uh, the optimal health and well-being of the neurons themselves, so making sure that there's enough vitamin B12. Sometimes that can be really helpful, and for some patients, we actually have to use um, super high dose, um, uh, oftentimes self-administered, so i.e. convenient to do it at home and much less uh, expensive if you can just do it yourself instead of paying a clinician to do it for you. Um, these self-administered at-home uh, high-dose methyl cobalamin or methyl B12 injections can be really helpful. <clears throat> Um, also, sometimes working with uh, certain phospholipids, so whether it's phosphatidylcholine or sometimes phosphatidylserine can be helpful. So those are some of the things that I found just in and of themselves to be helpful. Oh, I guess I also have to mention too, um, every once in a while, if there's patients who seem to have a lot of neuroinflammation going on, then working with anti-inflammatories like um, fish oil or curcumin or frankincense, also known as boswellia, um, those types of supplements can be really, really helpful if there seems to be a lot of acute um, neuroinflammation going on. Also, some patients, more thoughts coming into my head as I talk more and more, uh, some patients, if they have uh, mast cell activation syndrome or histamine intolerance, then working with things to help to quench histamine like quercetin can be invaluably helpful, or even just over-the-counter antihistamines can be really helpful while we're, of course, working on addressing the root cause of what's going on. So those are some things that I found to be particularly helpful to um, improve brain health, cognitive health, um, more I don't want to quite say symptom-wise, but I guess kind of symptom-wise for some of them. And uh, those are just more uh, kind of almost regardless of the cause of the cognitive challenges, then those are things that I think of as being just general good brain supports. Um, of course, there's other clinical clues that would come up that might indicate whether a person might need one over another. Um, and that's just part of the uh, the magic of, of being a clinician and getting the uh, opportunity to work with patients and kind of figuring out what, what seems to work the best. And so, you know, working with a good clinician uh, who can be sensitive to the little nuances in terms of what's going to be the most helpful for you is so, so important, which is why you should talk to your health a personal health authority. That's why I keep saying healthcare authority. Um, and uh, and so that, that would hopefully they can give you the best advice. So I hope that this uh, thoroughly answered the question that was put to me. Um, if there are any outstanding questions about this topic or anything else, don't hesitate to post them in the comment section below and I will leave it there.